morning again, everyone. I'm going to uh, pick up where uh, Dr. Wittstein left off. This is an interesting topic we've been covering for many years, and I think we have some clarity on some issues, uh, but we have uh, some issues that still yet to be uh, resolved. Um, I don't have any uh, uh, disclosures, really, for this talk. So we'll talk a bit about the ep epidemiology and pathophysiology of myocardial ischemia. We're going to talk about these strategies that Dr. Wittstein uh, referred to in terms of how do we prevent and how do we treat. And there's a little bit of difference here between the prevention and treatment side for ischemia. We're using different agents, beta blocker statins, blood pressure agents. We'll talk about that. Uh, and then we'll also talk about how we might be able to diagnose people with ischemia earlier and to treat them uh, earlier in the perioperative period. So again, the scope of the problem, I think everyone recognizes uh, that this is a common problem. Probably the, one of the most common problems occurs after surgery, and in fact, the most uh, common cause of perioperative death is cardiovascular complications. And just by way of definitions, we call major adverse uh, cardiac events, or MACE, uh, as a number of different things. Myocardial injury or infarction, MINS, is uh, myocardial injury after non-cardiac surgery. You may see that in, in the literature. We're going to focus mostly on myocardial infarction and injury. Other things that go into MACE are congestive heart failure, cardiogenic shock, cardiac arrest, stroke. We'll talk a bit about that as well, of, of course, as, as death. Uh, here is just a graphic that shows um, that the uh, risk of, uh, of uh, MACE is in part related to the type of surgery itself. Again, these are things that people are already aware. We're very focused, uh, for example, here on vascular surgery. We understand that vascular surgical patients have the highest risk, perhaps maybe less aware that neurosurgical patients and general surgery patients here have lesser risk but are quite high risk. And those uh, in the orthopedics and endocrine are also more uh, at, at lower risk but still substantive risk at about 2% or so um, in the perioperative period. One of the other things we want to focus on here is, is the, the types of myocardial infarctions. And there are actually several types. I've listed for you here the types that are most common in the perioperative period. So a type 1 MI or a spontaneous MI, this is the kind of the classic MI in which somebody has a plaque rupture and then acute thrombus occurs in their coronary artery. A type 2 MI is, a, uh, is an imbalance between oxygen demand and oxygen supply, but it's not due to coronary artery disease or atherosclerotic disease in a coronary. And then the, the type 4B or is a stent thrombosis, an acute stent thrombosis, and that is also something that we'll see in the perioperative period. And we want to distinguish uh, an infarction from injury. Uh, from a diagnostic point of view, it is important. We'll talk about what the implications are of this. Uh, and uh, there are some nuances. So obviously, anytime someone has an infarction, we know that there's going to be a change in their biomarkers, usually troponin. There's going to be a rise and fall. Uh, and that you, it should be, to reach, the, reach the, uh, a definition of infarction, in the setting of appropriate clinical signs and symptoms, which usually include either a, a, a symptom such as chest pain or a positive EKG. Now, it turns out in the perioperative period that very few people have those things. Only 10% of patients are, who are having injury perioperatively are also going to have, uh, uh, or who have troponins are going to have uh, uh, ischemic symptoms, and only 24% who have a positive troponin are going to have an ischemic EKG. So many of these people who have perioperative uh, injury actually don't meet the definition of myocardial infarction. They only meet the definition of injury, which is a positive biomarker, okay? And in the age of very high, sensitive, high sensitivity biomarkers, we can find a lot of these. And in fact, we can have 16% of patients over the age of 65 are going to have a positive troponin uh, after surgery. And there are ischemic causes for positive troponins, and there are non-ischemic causes for positive troponins, and I've listed some of them for you, sepsis, infection, and PE among them. <clears throat> 